Oh, hi. I'm so glad you showed up. I always garden in silk and heels. <laughs> Listen, we're getting ready to go in the backyard for the garden party. Get myself all wet. That's all right, come inside. Let's get this party started. Here we are. This is the patio of possibility. This is where I sit in the mornings and journal and plan my day. And I'm so excited to have you in my summer of yes backyard. I have spent <laughs> the time of COVID-19 feathering my nest and making my backyard the best it possibly could be. So welcome to the party. I have tons of food and drink available. I hope you feel at home. Silence your social media. Um, make yourself comfortable. Pour yourself a nice cold drink and let's dive in to making this a summer of yes to you. So one of the first things to saying yes to you is making sure that you have boundaries around your time. So we're gonna dive into becoming a time creator so that you actually have time this summer to sit on your patio or your balcony or in your hookah corner and have some downtime. Saying yes to you means everybody else gets more. There's no such thing as the kids get a front burner and you get a back burner or your spouse or partner gets a front burner and you get a back burner. When you get a front burner, everybody gets a front burner. So I like to sit out here and take the time to decide what my next moves are. Are they money moves? Um, are they moves that I need to make for my physical health? Like what's happening? And so I'm gonna sit out here during my garden party and I hope you'll join me as we dive in to saying yes to you. So let me just say that in the 17 years almost that I've lived in this house, I really haven't spent enough time enjoying my patio possibility and my backyard. When we first moved into this house, a master gardener lived here and I knew that between my dogs and my little kids, they were little at the time, it wasn't gonna stay that way and it didn't. And I travel so much that I really didn't pay much attention to this backyard. I am not someone who ever knew how to garden. I'm not someone who could ever keep the simplest and easiest of house plants alive. But I decided I was gonna become a woman who knew how to not just nourish and grow humans and businesses, I was gonna learn how to grow plants and flowers. And so I invested in lots of beautiful planters and lots of amazing plants grown in my local community and learned how to plant them, learned how much watering they need, learned how much fertilizer they need, just like human beings. What are the conditions for success? And so I'm gonna give you a little tour of all the different things that I planted. Um, so, one of the things that, that I planted was this really cool succulent hybrid. I love this, and of course I love begonias. I can't remember the name of this, but it's fuzzy, and I think it's cool, and these little white flowers are so beautiful. Um, I also have daisy trees that aren't doing so well. This is literally the only thing that I planted that isn't quite doing so well, so we're not aiming for perfection here. Um, I also upgraded and added these beautiful planters. I decided I wanted a fire pit because, hey, listen, I bring the fire, but I wanted a fire pit. We just put these rockers together. Those were just delivered. Literally all of this landscaping and this hammock are new. Um, I also decided, hey, I guess I'm a woman now that um, hangs out with birds. I'm Snow White in my backyard, so I put together <laughs> a bird bistro um, and let me show you my new statue and garden ball so my cat apollo is missing and we hope he comes home so i bought this cute statue as his welcome home statue when he eventually makes it i installed a garden ball and some hanging plants so i also decided that um, part of my backyard, this is actually the side of my neighbor's garage, so I installed some 
um, trellises that I planted some growing plants, some uh, clematis, and wanted to just make everything that I looked at a little better. Um, it's still very much a work in progress. So this back fence line, um, we removed, they were like 20 foot bushes that had to come out because they were just aging and dying. And so now you can see the road behind us and I didn't really like that. So <laughs> we're in process of, we just planted all these bushes and trees. Um, I planted magnolias and um, crepe myrtles because, and they actually came from South Georgia where I grew up. Um, and if you didn't know the hilarious story of the grass I'm standing on, I will tell it later in this webinar. Um, the summer of hell yes, my husband dug up this yard right before the photo shoot and I <laughs> decided uh -uh, and had sod delivered. But I just, in terms of how I wanted my backyard to look and feel, it's I'm gonna be working on it all summer, but literally everything that you're seeing is because I decided that if this is where I'm gonna be, it's gonna be the best it possibly can. So it's not Italy, it's not Barcelona, it's not Paris, it's not even the lake, y'all. Um, it's home and it is gonna be as abundant and as luxurious and as pleasing to me as it possibly can be. And I wanna help you create that for you as well. Welcome! I would love to hear you light up the chat. I did. I just did. Thank you. Um, I would love, my team is here. They're like, unmute yourself, boo. Hi, everybody. I was going to be hilarious. It's a dress, Lori. Look, I was going to be, um, I was going to be hilarious and put the same dress on that's in the video and be like, oh, I, uh, I'm a little sweaty from the garden tour, um, but you guys know that was pre-recorded, right? Uh, Brandon on my team did that. Thank you. Hi, Susie. Hi, Gabrielle. Um, I'm looking at this chat light up. Yay. I'm so excited. Um, I know I need fairy lights in my garden. I actually, if we're going to talk about, um, garden plans. I definitely have lights, like a, a pole that's being installed with lights that's going to cover the patio. Um, that's going to look amazing. And I have some other, since we did that video, right? Because the garden party was supposed to happen a couple weeks ago and it didn't. Good morning, Marlene. Um, uh, the, the landscape bed that all those new trees along the fence um, were planted, that landscape bed is now installed. It looks so beautiful. Everything's remulched. I'm gonna have to post some pictures on social media for everybody. Um, so we are continuing with the garden. Hi in Canada. Oh my God, a lot of Canadians here today. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Kim. Um, I thought it would be super fun to invite you. Thank you. I'm in a dynasty phase. And I have to admit, I'm not normally with full hair and makeup when I do classes, but we did do a photo shoot um, this morning. And as soon as I finish um, talking with all of you about creating miracles in your business and using self-care as a business plan, um, we, my team is eating lunch in the kitchen. And as soon as we finish here, we're gonna go back to a photo and video shoot because I don't know if you know this, but I have a YouTube TV show that just launched today called Go Time TV, and episode one dropped today. Um, and, the, and it's just meant to be like quick bursts of positivity and fun. Um, we have things called a two minute upgrade in them. Oh, thank you, Annette, for watching. Hi, Kimberly. Um, Somebody said, I need a solar, would you say, oh, a solar powered fountain for my bird bath. Yes. I need all y'all gardeners. You got tips for me. I want to hear them because I am so just getting started. Uh, my roses that I ordered have not arrived. Um, oh, some of them, knockout roses are in, but I ordered 
who's that guy? David, what's his face that has the fancy schmancy roses. I ordered some of those and we cannot locate them. A koi pond. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about a koi pond. Maybe. So anyway, let's talk about, um, yes, right after this, watch Go Time TV. I would so love it if you would subscribe and leave comments. Um, it would just delight me to know in. So I would love to also hear in the chat, let me know why you're here. Like, what do you hope you get out of listening to me talk about my garden and self-care as a business plan? Because let me tell you, I have so much goodness that you're going to get with this replay. I have something called a future self requirements journal that you're going to get. I have something called the unstoppable woman pledge that you're going to get. And we are going to make sure that you are taking exceptional care of yourself because what I know for sure is that the more fun I have, the more money I make and the more money I make, the more good I can do in the world. So, um, hello, hello. Okay. So you're here for beautiful feminine energy of self, employed and self-loving women. All right. Elizabeth says, I'm a single mama who's trying to build two businesses to support a daughter and myself. Self-care feels very elusive. All right, Elizabeth, I got you. Um, Julie, I want to stop working all the time. Listen, I got you. Um, Grace says, fun is one of my core values and I'm not having fun right now and have it for a while. Grace, I'm your muse. I'm your muse on this. Christine says, I love gardening, co-creating with God. Um, thank you, Lizzie. New perspective. All right. All right. I got y'all. So my right hand, Mallory, um, who is our marketing director, is here managing the chat. So feel free to light up that chat with questions, comments. She's going to make sure that you have everything that you need. And let's get going. Now, I'm going to scare everyone with a screen share um, <laughs> that is probably um, those of you who have been on webinars with me know. I know Jake is still in his cone, but his paw is doing so much better. But he just, we tried to take it off the other day and he immediately went right for his sore on his paw and he just keeps You'll hear him rattling around down there. Um, and in fact, in uh, Brandon, my videographer, was telling me, he was like, I don't know if you noticed, but in some of the Go Time episodes, you can hear him under your desk. <laughs> it's like, welcome to my life, everybody. Ooh, Chris, your word of the year is fun. This is gonna be fun. This, oh, don't rush the cone of shame. All right, um, brace yourselves. Brace thyself. I know somebody come over here and organize my desktop. All right, let's go into presentation mode. Thank you for coming to my garden party. For those of you who are here and are like, who is this lady? Um, I am a master certified life coach. I've been a coach for 13 years. Uh, I'm an author. I'm the creator of Bear, which is the book that I published last year. I'm almost finished with my second book, Bold. Um, I'm here because I'm obsessed with lots of things, including Beyonce and running and Peloton and Nespresso, but I'm mostly obsessed with helping you get what you want. And today we're talking about doing that through self-care. So this is a little bit of the Hyatt Riot fam bam. I've been married 27 years to the Silver Fox and my kiddos are 19 and 21. Cora and Ryan. And this is just a little bit about me. Um, also last year, I gave a TEDx talk. If you want to check that out, I've been featured in O Magazine. Um, uh, last year, I was on uh, Hallmark Home and Family, which was super fun. And I just want to remind you, this is a distraction-free zone because I want you to get the most out of this. So do yourself a favor, Flav, and down or shut down all your tabs and give yourself the time and the space to really be welcomed to my garden and learn some things. Um, so I already mentioned it, the vibe today is the more fun I have, the more money I make. So I wanna hear in the chat, I wanna read in the chat, how many of you believe that, that the more fun you have, the more money you'll make? 
Um, there's some people raising their hands. Um, absolutely, absolutely. More fun combined with some structure, yeah. Oh, Joy says, um, I believe it, but I don't follow it. No, that's Angela. Angela said that. Okay, Angela. Um, yep, yep, okay. I got a lot of people here that are with me. For those of you who are side-eyeing me and aren't quite sure, then I'm gonna help you out here because when I created that mantra, I didn't fully believe it either. I, prior to, um, so my career, I started out in marketing and PR, and then I was a stay-at-home mom for a few years, and then I re-entered the workforce as a residential real estate agent and became very successful as a realtor, but burnt to the crisp. Um, and so when I created this company, I noticed that I was bringing some of my workaholic tendencies into life coaching. And they, listen, all y'all life coaches here, there is nothing sadder than a burnt out, adrenal fatigued life coach. Um, and so I created this mantra, the more fun I have, the more money I make, and I set out to prove it true. Grace says she's crispy. Um, and so I have created a business plan that is infused with pleasure, is infused with self-care. Um, the very foundation of everything that I do, um, because it's, it's all so related. You can have the most amazing strategy plan in the world, but if you're too exhausted to implement it, or if you're just eh, at like, what's the point? What's the point? We're here to have fun. So I'm going to do another screen share and move on to some content. So let's talk about the unstoppable woman's code of conduct. And I'm going to ask you to take a pledge before the end of today's webinar. And it, it starts with fueling yourself daily. Um, and that means fueling yourself by the power foods that you eat, the power foods that you think. Um, that I, I uh, am joking here by saying you got to floss your brain daily, but ain't that the truth? If you allow negative thinking to take over, and you're not conscious to what you're feeding your brain, it's not gonna matter. It's not gonna matter what else you do. So you have to floss your brain daily. You have to run your business like an actual business. So all y'all entrepreneurs who love being an entrepreneur but aren't experiencing the success that you want, a lot of the time, um, in addition to self-care and not having enough fun and not um, taking care of yourself properly, another thing that I see is not treating your business like an actual business. And we'll get into some of those telltale signs. And you know what? I want to encourage you to get emotional. All right? How many of you have had jobs where you were taught to do basically to do it like a man um you were taught like oh you're so sensitive or you can't show emotion in a meeting or you know basically suck it up and the thing that i know for sure part of the success that i've had in my business ariel says yes kk says me i hated it um part of redefining and smashing hustle culture, right? I'm out to, to smash diet culture, but also hustle culture because they're related. They are both part of the patriarchy. We are not meant to just replicate what men are doing in business. And one of the things that I noticed that infuriates me is that women are constantly talked down to and told that we're too emotional, right? Oh, a woman couldn't run the country. Women are too emotional. Let me tell you something. Oh, Ariel says I had a hidden spot where I would go cry. Valerie says I'm emotional because I'm a writer. Um, Andrea says I was literally told and taught that a good physical therapist needs to be incredibly stable and not have an emotional reaction. Susie says die before cry. You were an attorney. That's when you were an attorney, right, Susie? Um, fake it till you make it. Um, right. The countries that are run right now by women are the ones that have the highest score or are the best at controlling COVID-19. Let me tell you something. I want to encourage you. Part of my self-care 
plan is expression. I want you to get emotional. We need to see the full range of emotion that women have because honestly, in any marketing, in any advertising, in any sales, it's emotional. People purchase because of emotion. Um, and so expression, part of the reason I love running my own business and being a coach is that it gives me a platform for expression. So when I am, when the expectation is that I am not emotional or that I button it up and I'm professional, it's a no for me. It's a no. I'm out, dog. Um, because it's very difficult for me now because over the past 13 years, I've grown more and more. I've grown bolder and bolder and bolder. Thank you, Susie. I love it when you get all fired up too. And, and listen, it's, you love it because that it's how I am, right? Like I'm just expressing emotion. You may not always agree with me, but I think that part of the problem in business and female owned businesses is that I was talking about this yesterday with Mo Carrick. She um, has this wonderful series that's called the Do Better Hour. And, and one of the things we talked about was if, if we're gonna run anti-racist or anti-oppressive businesses, we have to look at how we have absorbed and are replicating the way that men are doing it. And that is one of the ways. And so in this unstoppable code of conduct, one of the things I want you to treat yourself to is the allowance of your own emotion. And um, uh, Laurie says, I ate instead of feeling my feels. Such a great point because Renee says, the more I rant, the more I rock. Yes, that is true. Um, in my work with Bear and also with Bold, with girls, um, it is true that when a woman does not honor her emotions, one of the ways that we have been taught to cope is to eat our feelings. And so I want you to get emotional, get messy, do it. All right. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Who here agrees with this statement? You are a force. You are a force. And you are unstoppable. So I want you to type in the chat, if you're willing to say yes to honoring the force and becoming unstoppable with what you say you want. We're gonna get to your goals here in a second. Um, let me see what's yes okay yes angela you are a force yes i love this group everybody who showed up today is freaking on it um mm -hmm. yes 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 all right i got a live group i got a live group i love it all right so Here's what I want to know, and we'll get, I'll show you the pledge that you're going to get that you can sign um, here in a second. But I want to know if, if you're buying into, which I hope you are, the truth of the matter, which is that you are an unstoppable force, what are your current top business, what is your current top business goal for this third quarter? So Q3 is June, July, August. And we're already, you know, into June, right? Um, but what is your top business goal? And I would love to see in the chat what it is. I can tell you that some of my top business goals for Q3 launch Go Time TV, which we launched that today, finish the bold book, uh, which is on track. Um, fill my on the six mastermind, which you're gonna hear a little bit about at the end of today's broadcast launch it. Julie wants to launch a membership. Um, oh, you're right. July, August, September. Sorry. <laughs> Are we still in Q2? I feel so much better about myself right now. Um, October, November, December is Q4. So you're right. Um, start my YouTube channel, rank to silver. I don't even know what the rankings are, Julie. I just launched my YouTube channel and I, I've got no idea. I'm sure my people know. 
um, execute a new launch, earn 16K from the launch, resign from my full-time corporate gig. Oh, joy. Just got a co-publishing deal for a book to publish in 2022. Holy cow, Charlotte, congratulations. Renee says 50K launch from my online course and publish my book. I'm here for that. Susie says launch my new business model, include creativity, be more regular with my Facebook lives on my business plan. Yay. Can I say get my shit together? Yes, you can. But I want to know specifically what that means, Stacy. What does it specifically mean to get your shit together? Um, Misty says launch my online public speaking courses for high achieving female leaders. Yay, Misty. Okay, God, this is an amazing group, you guys. Nine clients in Q3, launch a confidence coaching program. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Create an additional 50K, 10 one-on-one -on -one clients. Okay, actually get a plan. Um, sell my business for 1 million and make 250 as a chief people officer for one amazing company. KK, let's do it. All right. That, my friends, is quite a list for Q3. I mean, can you feel the miracle energy here happening? Mm. Shanti says, finish my business plan. Hi, Shanti. Um, and hold to my new pricing. Yes. All right. Okay. I'll allow it. Those are amazing goals. So now what I want to know is what's your current top personal goal for the summer? Now, I know, me included, y'all been whining and crying about not being able to go anywhere and get on planes and all that. Me too. I even whined a little bit in that video if you saw, if you were here at the very beginning. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's not an exotic location, but it is my home. <laughs> What's your top personal goal? It could be anything. It could be, um, I wanna finish reading White Fragility. I want to um, plant some flowers. I want to um, go on a hike, nature hike. Like, what's your top personal goal for the summer? Light up that chat and tell me. And I was trying to think, like, what's my new personal goal for the summer? Oh, you know what it is, y'all? Um, the silver fox, since I can't get on a plane, has talked me into an RV road trip. An RV. Um, but I'm going to do it. I think it'll be fun. That's, that's my top personal goal for the summer. I want to know what yours is. Um, build more muscle through weight training. Take a road trip with your kids. Um, Danielle says, get the house ready and sell it. Danielle, where are you going? Um, Elizabeth says, learn as much as I can about Black Lives Matter um, and my own racism. That's an amazing personal goal. Um, and I'm proud to say uh, Danielle that, or not Danielle, who said that? Elizabeth said that. Um, so all of my training programs now will have tools for that, for anti-racism and anti-oppression. So I'm super stoked about all that. We hired an amazing um, diversity and inclusion specialist to help us. Charlotte says, RV road trip. I have it all planned. Holy cow. 2,500 miles away, launched my life coaching career, moved to, hey, Gwen, awesome. All right, all right, all right. Meet three people a week to test my idea of becoming a brokerage firm, best practices. Awesome, Monique. Um, okay, okay, okay. We've got yoga, better sleep, meditating. I just want to make sure you're thinking about these things because your personal goals give rocket fuel to your professional goals, right? So if you all work no play, boo, you are leaving money on the table. Leaving money on the table. All right. All right, I wanna make sure you wrote those down. Don't just type it into the chat to be cute. Write down your top business and your top personal goal. Okay. Um, Here's the thing that I love to say to women in business, because this is something that almost every woman really struggles with until she learns how to not do this. Um, don't demote 
your cravings, your goals, your desires for the sake of everyone else. So I want to challenge you to prioritize yourself because no one's going to do that part for you, unfortunately. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, but your kids are overly concerned with you prioritizing yourself. Your spouse or partner may be concerned a little bit if you're super burnt out, but prioritizing yourself, that's your job. So if you're waiting for all the people around you to value you in the way you think you should be valued, it starts with you. So when I talked about in the video, this notion that, oh, I can't, you know, whatever, go to yoga, meditate, um, buy a pool, I don't care what it is, whatever your personal goal was, your mind crack is gonna settle in and come up with all the reasons why Somebody needs braces, um, it, it, it's not fair to the kids, so-and-so is gonna get mad, whatever nonsense your mind, the dust in your mind's gonna kick up. It's imperative that you remind yourself in multiple ways that if you get a front burner, so does everybody else. We wanna be in abundance about this. And, the topic of all topics in helping you use self-care as a business plan is the discussion of the invisible workload of women. So I bet many of you know what I'm talking about when I talk about the invisible workload. Who knows and who doesn't? Like, and totally be honest, if you don't know, great, because I'm going to talk about it. Um, it is important to understand what that is. Um, Kaja, I hope I'm saying your, Khadija, am I saying your name right? I need to find out how to say that. Um, KK knows what it is, she lived it. Julie says you taught me what it was. Oh, I said it right. Um, Grace says I totally know and I've tried to explain it to my husband and he doesn't get it. So Grace, I used to, when the kids were little, and Deborah says the keeper of all the things. Yes, I'll talk some more about it too. Um, when my kids were little and Scott and I were in couples therapy and I would try to explain how, even though he thought everything was even Steven, it wasn't, and there wasn't any way I could explain it. And it was exacerbating to me that it wasn't obvious to him that while he's laying on the couch watching TV and I'm folding laundry like that, I'm doing more. And I wanted an award for doing more. I was on the bitter bus, y'all. And um, when I stumbled upon an article written that coined it the invisible workload of women, meaning that even if you live with other people, a spouse or partner, kids, roommate, whatever, um, and even if on the surface, it's like, oh, I fold the laundry, they put it away. I cook, they do the dishes or vice versa, whatever it is. Even if it looks even Steven, it's not because women tend to do the inner invisible emotional work for the family, the office, the community. So we know where everything is. We know who needs what sippy cups so they don't throw a tantrum. We know who needs to be vaccinated when, um, all those things. And we're, we're, our minds are always going with managing all the things. And it's a really, really different reality. And it's a, it's a part-time job. It's an invisible part-time job. So there was, um, somebody, somebody, uh, did a, a really cool cartoon about this and I sent it to my husband, the silver Fox, who I love very much. And I'm like, this is what I was trying to explain all those years ago. And he emails back within like 60 seconds. And do you know what he said? I just took out the trash this morning. I was like completely over his head still. So our jobs is, we, it is, I am not suggesting that your happiness will come from everyone understanding the invisible workload of women, you need to understand it so that you can then act accordingly, which means delegate and get shit off your plate, whether they understand or not. So I gave up everybody trying to um, 
buy into or award me or give me a gold star, right? You got to let go of the need for them to admit because we all know, right? I know you do more. I know. If we had a film crew, which is was my fantasy, and now I have one, um, but I'm like, if we had a film crew follow us around and keep a little tally of who did what, I would win. I need to win, right? As soon as I just let that go and it's like, oh, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of business. I'm going to hire this shit out, and I'm going to put you to work, and I'm going to put you to work inside my house, and that's how it's going to be. All of a sudden, I had more time for myself. I digress. Um, all right. So um, I also want to talk to y'all, male or female. It's actually worse for women um, that the U.S. is the only advanced economy with no paid vacation policy. So 41% of y'all don't take your paid time off if you work for someone else. And 56% have not taken a vacation in the last year. 28% no vacations. Um, and this is um, primarily women did not take vacation so that they could prove their dedication and not be seen as slackers. Ridiculous. Um, this is just some more stuff about work addiction. So our culture really um, awards people on that. But despite all the long hours we work, we're not more productive than other countries who practice beautiful self-care. So Here's the statistic that is probably going to set your ass on fire <laughs> that women actually today have less leisure time than they did 15 years ago, while men have increased their leisure time. So look at this. Adult men have around 43 hours of downtime a week on average, while women only have about 38 hours a week to themselves. And I bet many of you are laughing at that statistic. Like, where's my 38 hours, Susan Hyatt? I don't have 38 hours. Um, and so if you look at this, this is the kind of stuff that, that my husband won't like admit to. But it, it's really this, that if you look at the amount of minutes per day that, and this is very hetero, right? I know not all of y'all are hetero. Um, but that men spend about an hour and 25 minutes a day on household stuff and women two hours and 15 minutes. And so the research doesn't lie. But here's the thing is that we are, women are amazing. And what I wanna challenge you to do with this unstoppable pledge that you're gonna take is to, we have been settling for breadcrumbs for so long that this hashtag no more breadcrumbs, we're, get, we're here for the whole cake. All right, which you're only going to get if you start practicing better self-care and you fucking deserve it. So I'm just going to stop for a second and see what's happening in the chat and see what y'all thought about those stats. Oh, right. 38 hours. Ha ha ha. Um, right. It's not the task list being equal, right? We're, we're, we're the ones worrying and all that stuff. And we have to stop it. We have to prioritize ourselves because no one else is going to do it for you, right? We're so busy worried about everybody else. We are sacrificing our genius. And I say no more. I say no more. So you deserve it, boo. Um, and he, I also want to invite you to reframe fun because I, I have heard from female business owners that it's like, it just seems frivolous. And my counter to that is like, fun is actually fierce because fun is gonna give you not only a better feeling state, but more money and it's freaking fierce. So again, the more fun I have, the more money I make, I have proven it to be true over and over and over again. Um, and the other thing that kind of rides shotgun with this belief, and it's what my TED Talk and my book is based on, is that if you're not experiencing the business success that you want, you may be telling yourself a lie like this one, which is that you just need more willpower. And what I have learned and proved true is that women have willpower. I mean, we have buckets of willpower. Look at what the hell we put up with, <laughs> right? Like, we have all the willpower in the world. We don't need more willpower. We need more pleasure. 
because women experience things very differently. And our wisdom is activated through pleasure. Um, so these are really my two secret weapons to my business success. Yes, I'm very consistent with my business hours. Yes, I, um, I do all the things I say I'm going to do, but the reason that I'm able to show up consistently for business hours is because of these two secret, secret weapons, pleasure and fun. Um, and so I mentioned that a woman's success and brilliance and genius is really activated through pleasure. And so decadence for the summer is something that I wish for you. Um, if you have been mesmerized by your computer screen all year and scrolling till your eyeballs hurt, I want to invite you to make a list of things that you could do that are decadent for yourself. And by decadent, we tend to think of food like chocolate cake is decadent, which of course, if you wanna have a nice piece of chocolate cake, go for it. But it's more like, I would love to hear your ideas in the chat of what would be a decadent experience for you. So it could be a nap. It could be just sitting, one of my favorites is just sitting in the sun for five minutes, a five minute break during my work day with my dogs. Um, before we claim it and make the, oh, floating in the pool, sitting on the patio reading, a long bath, candles, and reading an anti-racist book, um, RV road trip in a bright red RV, red inside and out, that's so fun. Kristen says, as an aromatherapist, I talk about this all the time. Creating a beautiful blend for women is one of my favorite things to do. That's awesome, Kristen. Um, enjoy my lunch or dinner outside, continue my great meditation practice, solo hikes and walks, a house that smells good. I have to tell you my house, look at this, you guys, my house smells amazing. Um, I love the um, vanilla cupcake scent of candles and my amazing assistant, Bianca, had um, summer of yes like she had a little custom yes label made for my candles my house smells amazing because i prioritize all my senses what i look at i want it to be nice what i smell what i hear i'm a i'm really sensitive to noise and things like that and so if you've been on a webinar with me before i'm like what's that noise mute yourself um but engaging in all your senses is going to help you activate pleasure-based genius which then will help you with your business plan in a different way um donna said she runs her diffuser often that's probably more healthy um my husband is always my husband who like if you want to talk about like our help I'm definitely much healthier than him in terms of the power foods I eat and the way I move my body. And he's all like, you know, those candles are pumping toxins in the air. And I'm like, that's the thing you're concerned about? How about the pint of Ben and Jerry's a day, sir? Um, Linda says, by myself, either in a nearby garden, my backyard, front yard. Yeah, I like to be by myself too a lot. Aromas sound good. Okay. Oh, by the way, in the chat, make sure that you're chatting to all panelists and attendees. Otherwise, I'm the only one. And you may only want me to see it, but everybody can see it if you do the other. Okay. So here's, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to exit out of this and show you something really quick. All right. So here's the pledge that I'm inviting you to take that you're gonna get um, with the replay. And it's the unstoppable pledge for entrepreneurs, CEOs, and all women with big, exciting work to do. And I mentioned earlier some of the things like fueling yourself daily, flossing your brain daily, running your business like an actual business, um, getting emotional, and there's a place for you to sign. Um, 
And what I would love for you to do is to say yes right now in the comments about what you're going to say yes to. Are you gonna claim it and make this pledge for yourself? Because it's great to show up to a garden party and type goals in the chat, but it's another thing to say, yes, I am claiming that I am a force, that I am unstoppable, I, and I recognize this invisible workload that is messing with my productivity, my zone of genius, all those things, and I'm pledging to prioritize myself. I wanna see in the chat who is saying yes to that. Yay, Sandy, Amanda, Annette. Okay, awesome. I'm gonna show you some other, absolutely, okay. All right, you guys are on it today. Yes, I love all the emoji, Samantha. <laughs> So good. All right. Um, all right. So I would also love to hear what you're saying yes to specifically. So some of you were typing the specifics, but what are you saying yes to? And then if you're going to make the pledge and you're going to say, I'm saying yes to this, I'm prioritizing this, then we have to schedule it. So one of the things that may not sound like a lot of fun, but it is, I wanna know what your non-negotiable business hours are. I bet some of y'all aren't claiming business hours. I wanna hear it in the chat. And also non-negotiable playtime. So what happens if we don't have regular business hours, even though on the surface it may seem like, oh, that's so old school. I want to be spontaneous. I want to work when I want to work. The thing that happens is that work time is always happening, especially if you work for yourself. Like we're so attached to um, email and Slack and all those things that it can bleed over into your down and your playtime. And I also want to invite you to, as part of this process is to say no to unnecessary obligations. So I want you to bag. I want you to think about your to do's over the next couple of weeks. And are there some unnecessary obligations that are happening. So one of the things that I think is an unnecessary obligation that's on my schedule for tomorrow morning. So Fridays are what I call fun Fridays. And I typically do whatever I want on a fun Friday. And I agreed like a month ago to have breakfast with our financial advisor about setting up a trust. And Scott was reminding me that like, we're supposed to have breakfast out tomorrow at 8 a.m. about this. And I'm like, what, COVID-19 pancakes? What are you saying? Like, what? And he was like, you said, okay. And I'm like, I don't know what I was thinking. That's an unnecessary obligation. Yes, we need to get this trust officer up to speed on things, but we can do that shit over Zoom, right? So being really clear, like, I'm not freaking up my fun Friday with that. Forget it. So I would love to know what you're saying no to as well. What unnecessary obligations are you saying no to? And... I get all pointy. What kind of help can you enlist? So if you have the budget to hire things out, do that, okay? You deserve that. If you don't have the budget to enlist help and pay for it, can you barter with someone? I, I know y'all have probably extra people in that house <laughs> that can do things, right? Um, and I want you to fund your goals, your professional and personal goals. So 30% of your family budget needs to be spent on you. How about it? I said what I said. 30%. I want you to think about that right now. How much of your family budget is spent on you? Now, if you live alone, you may say a hundred boo, and I am here for that. But yeah, 30%. Susie, I knew you were going to have that reaction. Elizabeth says, yikes, that's tricky. It is ridiculously luscious. 
here's what happens when you, and I would love to hear all the other reactions. Think about the amount of money in your family budget. Yes, Angela. Goes to other stuff. See if you can identify how much of your budget is spent on you. I'm gonna challenge you on this. When I started prioritizing myself, putting other people to work, spending more money on me, like funding my business goals and my personal goals, if, if they were things that cost money, a lot of them don't. Guess what happened? Guess what happened? I started making a lot more. Um, my stepkids get that when I use 30% of my income, 30% of your net. So not your gross, your take home. Oh my God, Susie, get that new motorboat. Angela says I spend on the business, but not as much on me. So I knew this would come up and thank you for saying it, Angela. So a lot of strong, unstoppable women that I work with will say, well, they'll spend it on Facebook ads. They'll spend it on um, trainings. They'll spend it, which are all amazing things to spend money on, right? Um, but they're not spending it on theirs. So you can't see Angela's comments because um, y'all gotta y'all gotta set your chat to all panelists and attendees. Uh, Valerie says, "So very true. When I spend money on me, I found I find more miracles." Yes, you do. That's just something to think about. I said what I said. Um, here's the thing, and a, a couple of people put it in the chat high stress, guilt, and workload concerns keep women from using their time off. And women report higher stress at home, higher stress at work. And they are much more likely to say that guilt and the mountain of work they would return to hold them back from taking time off. And women also worry more than men about vacation making them seem less committed to their job. Y'all. Okay, let's talk about this really quickly. So when I talk about self-care, I think people get confused. There's maintenance and there's care. Really want you to think about the difference. So when a woman says to me, I take great care of myself. I go get mani pedis. I get my eyebrows waxed. Um, I'm like, that is fucking maintenance, y'all. That is not actual self-care. Now, are you maintaining your <laughs> nails and eyebrows? Yeah, that's not self-care. It's different. It's different. And the dark side of self-care, which is why I see women not prioritizing it enough, is that it can feel like an extra job. It's like, oh, I can't possibly think about that because we tend to over effort with everything. And so then we turn it into this part-time job when self-care is really tapping into what you need and asking this question, what feels like love? Okay. That may or may not feel like a motorboat. <laughs> Susie, I'm, I'm on team boat, but um, what feels like love might feel like staying in your pajamas on Sunday. What feels like love might feel like saying no to COVID-19 pancakes on a fun Friday. What feels like love might be like, oh, I've got this cute pride crown my friend sent me in the mail. Like, whatever. That's how you break through the nonsense and ask what feels like love. That's authentic self-care. And so when you feel fabulous and full of energy, you make more money, period period. So we're talking about mental self-care, physical, right? So mental is thought work, flossing that brain, making sure that you're not letting the mean girl in your head take charge. Physical is, I hope, and I'm inviting you this summer to move your God pod because you need to get those endorphins going and we're creatures built to move. Um, spiritual self-care. So some of you have mentioned meditation. Some of you belong to a religion that you love. 
um, some of you just practice spiritual self-care like me, hiking in nature. And then there's fiscal, fiscal y'all, fiscal self-care. Um, to accomplish all this, you need probably to get some help and assemble a squad. Now, let's go back to thinking about what was your goal that you said you wanted, your top business goal and your top personal goal, okay? Um, you're gonna get an amazing, beautiful digital journal that you can print off to help you with this as your invitational homework. I am obsessed with Peloton and um, Robin Arzon, who is one of my favorite instructors, I was on a ride with her recently and she said, you know, your future self, she's got requirements. So if you're telling me, and it just hit me like, oh, I love that and I created a future self journal around this, what are the requirements of your future self? If you're telling me today that you know, your business goal is to launch a membership community and your personal goal is to um, meditate daily. Okay, your future self's already done that. And she knows what it takes to get there. So what are the requirements to become that woman who by the end of the summer or by the end of 2020, you're like, you know what, Susan Hyatt, I launched that thing. I move my body in this way. I experience these things. I took great care of myself. What are they? What are those requirements? Um, what do you think you need to make that goal a reality? So I wanna show you just really quickly before I dive into on the six, which is one way you could reach those goals. This is what the future self requirements journal looks like you're gonna to wanna to open the replay email we send out because it has um, requirements for sleep, your morning routine, your thoughts, your personal squad, your business squad, which I hope I'll become part of your business squad if I'm not already, your domestic squad, money squad, the fun you need to have, self-care, all this stuff is covered in this amazing journal. So, whoops, hang on. I'm gonna close that out. No, close current tab. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Um, it, is, it is totally awesome. I don't want to show you that. Where did my, oh, here we go. Can you guys see that okay? On the Six Mastermind. So we have recently extended On the Six from a six month mastermind to a 12 month mastermind. And I wanna show you some of the testimonials from the current group and many of them are continuing on. Um, and I wanna just tell you what's included because we are scheduling interviews right now. The, the course starts the third week of July. Um, so this is Jessica and she sent me a message that said, oh my gosh, like this on the six voodoo works. So the first five months of the year, she generated over 53K in new revenue and she thinks that it was the best decision she ever made. This is Jackie Gartman. Jackie is a coaching veteran and she's like, this is the busiest I've ever been. Um, this is Kimberly. Kimberly, I think you're here. Light up the chat. Kimberly, she is such a breath of fresh air. Her first launch, she earned 20K in her first month of On The Six. Um, this is Caitlin. Caitlin is uh, so amazing. And I believe Caitlin signed up again. She had, can you see me? Oh, hang on a second, you guys. You can't see me. All right, sorry. All right, how about now? Mallory, can you see it now? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go back. I'm just gonna show you. Okay, sorry about that. This is Jessica. This is Jackie. This is Kimberly. This is Caitlin. This is Emily. Emily was a great success story because Emily's uh, um, company is event planning. And she had to, during COVID-19, completely pivot from in-person event planning to virtual event planning. And she helped us quite a bit. And she's had her most profitable month in business ever. 
This is Stacy Bruce. Stacy is one of my bear coaches and she also is in on the six and um, has signed up again and talks about how it's just helped her own her role as a coach. And I'm doing the damn thing, being all in. This is Allison. Allison is signing up again as well. She is literally doing all the things. She's got her system set up, regular content. She grew her email list. Um, so proud of her as well. This is Dr. Alessandra Duke. Oh my God. Also amazing woman. Um, she's been able to pivot her local community events to be a virtual and national event offering. So let me tell you what's included. And the, literally we have testimonials from every single person, all 35 <laughs> masterminders. Um, so we have more we can show you, but um, what you get in this 12 month program is you get quarterly private one-on-one -on -one sessions. So this is Anamika, who is my COO and strategist. So you get a 90 minute strategy and planning call with Anna and you get four 30 minute coaching sessions with our business accountability coach, Patty. There's nothing like this uplifting community that we've put together. Um, each month, there's a money generating assignment and challenge. You get 24 live class calls on Zoom with me. So 24 to a month live class calls. You get 24 marketing trainings with Anna Mika. So marketing materials, funnels, Facebook ads, all that kind of stuff. Um, we also are going to, this time, this is new. You can submit your marketing materials twice a month for a marketing review and get feedback and assistance. Uh, we also have weekly tech and marketing Q and A calls. And you also get Finish Strong, which is a two day annual event. This year it's gonna be virtual because of COVID-19, but we, we cover topics like business planning, podcasting, sales, mindset, motivation, all kinds of good stuff. And I have a brand new digital program called In Demand. It's really, honest to God, everything you need to know about running a business online. And um, people are having amazing results from this digital program. All of my mastermind people get that for free. And also I mentioned during this broadcast, we have hired a diversity and inclusion specialist who is going to help us with anti-racist training and resources. So we've got you covered there. And I don't know if you've seen the amazing boxes of swag I send out to people in my programs, but we have a magnificent box of swag going out to your door. Um, now, here's a bonus. Alexandra Franzen, who is the lead copywriter for Susan Hyatt, the agency, and she is my copywriter. She is teaching a class, an email writing workshop. So basically, she's going to teach you how and give you templates, um, plug and play templates that are based on some of our most lucrative emails that have made us money and not just me, but other clients of hers. So like, hey, this email led to 400K in sales or this email really helped sell out this retreat. She's gonna walk you through that. And it's free to all my On The Six Mastermind peeps who sign up by the end of this month. Um, you also get tons of materials like this 30 day action plan, um, Mallory is going to put the link in the chat and if you click on that link and click on apply now, it's a real simple type form application where you can fill that out and get a call with Patty Rantapa, who will just answer questions, see if it's a good fit, all those things. Now, investment. The investment is 9997 and we have payment plans, including a 12 pay. So you can make monthly payments on it. There's, I think, a $500 deposit, and then you can choose your payment plan, whether it's pay in full, um, three pay, six pay, or 12 pay, which is pretty exceptional. So um, I'm gonna pause the, my slides and see what questions are coming up for any of you who, there are a lot of you still here. Um, so you may have questions about 
the mastermind, what you can expect, all those things. Yeah, the 12 pay is an amazing addition. We literally started that because of COVID-19 and understanding that people are needing a little longer to pay for things. Um, so um, Grace wants to know if we're gonna run it next year. Yes, Ariel says the absolute best community. Thank you, Gabrielle. Um, Lulu says, my biggest issue is that I have imposter syndrome. I wanna move forward, but I almost talked myself out of it. Lulu, I recorded a seven part series on my podcast called Attitude Adjustment. And one of the, it's a super short episode, but it talks about imposter syndrome. You're not alone. Every single person in business has experienced imposter syndrome. And I want you to realize that it's just a collection of thoughts in your mind that tells you like, who do you think you are or you're a fraud or whatever it might be. And so the good news is all you have to do is be coached to tell yourself something different. Imposter syndrome, it's like, we tend to think like, we'll, we'll say the same thing about like money blocks. It's like, oh, I have money blocks. And we make it this big thing. Money blocks are just thoughts. Imposter syndrome is just a couple of thoughts that you just need to reframe. Um, and everybody, everybody's brain works the same way and that it, it issues negative impulses because of the way we're wired and we can rewire the brain. We can give it more positive things to think. Thank you, Erica. Erica says the community is amazing. Yes, the community is on Facebook. So we have the main hub of communication is a private Facebook group that's very active. Um, and um, so Grace wants to know, how helpful is this for business to business consultants, trainers, coaches versus life coaches? So we have a variety of consultants, trainers, coaches, and businesses inside on the six. So it's very helpful. Um, imposter syndrome. Oh, Charlotte's like, we cannot see what you see. <laughs> Um, thank you, Sandy. So I want to, before we say goodbye, I want to see if there are any residual questions about payment plans or what's included or what we cover. I'm really proud of On The Six. I'm really proud of each and every one. Each and every, there is not a single person in that group who isn't slaying it. Um, Z, Hi, Ms. Chapman. Um, what about peeps getting started? Yes. People who are just getting started are welcome in on the six. So it's really, it's a combination of people who are just getting started or there could be seasoned people in there that just haven't hit the six figure mark yet. Um, and so we've set it up this time where once you hit six figures, you can then graduate to my higher level mastermind. And so let's say, you're in on the six and you're just getting started and you may need the whole year to make your first six figures, but you may come in at 50 K and have a great launch and want to bump up to the higher level mastermind. We definitely will be graduating people in that way. So it's really, it's not so much like, uh, it's the, it's the benchmark of that 100 K zero to 100 K. So Mallory is putting, um, can you share the bonus if we sign up by June 30th? So the bonus, is, do, you, do you mean share details about it? The bonus is um, the two-day email writing workshop with Alexandra Franzen, which I'm not going to lie, the whole 10 grand you're going to pay for on the six is what Alex deserves for that two-day workshop. <laughs> because, I mean, in my opinion, she is the most gifted copywriter walking. Yeah, she's really cool. I've worked with her now for over 10 years and there's a reason. Erica, you yourself are an amazing copywriter. I'm glad to hear that you've learned so much from her. So there's almost 70 people still here. So you must be here because you want to apply. I will say you don't just get me. You get my COO, Anamika, who's an amazing strategist. You get Patty, 
who is an amazing coach. She's the head coach for my company. And you also get an entire team with my agency who will be putting on lots of marketing classes and things for you. So we have a full-time videographer that you can learn from. We have Mallory, who is our full-time social media and marketing expert that you can learn from. Um, I mean, Holly, who's our creative director, who can talk about branding. I mean, we just really have a very robust offer. That's a cool combo of community, right? I tend to attract amazing women who are unstoppable, who I always say, like, I don't do drama, I do business. And that's the kind of people we attract, like people who are interested in a rising tide lifting all boats. So yeah. Bye, Janice. I'm so glad you guys had fun. Thank you for coming to my garden party. I so love sharing what I'm obsessed with, which currently is my yard. Um, if you want to click on that link and have a chat, no strings attached to Patty, do that. I'm going to go eat some lunch, get my hair and makeup gussied up and have some more photo shoot time. So I so appreciate you guys coming to my garden party. I hope you have a beautiful weekend. And just remember, no one's gonna prioritize you but you. So do it. All right, bye everybody.